Greetings, Shalom, Jukol Yisrael, you that have joined us for this live broadcast, live telecast, live stream, audio, visual. We greet you all in the precious name of Yahshua HaMashiach, for he is the Yahshua. He is the power of the Amir, the voice of Yah to redeem a people from under the power of sin and death whereby our minds are separated from him Hallelujah. and for that reason alone we should brach, we should esteem him for his mighty power of deliverance unto a house that is not even worthy of it God, we greet you all we greet our friends as well as our enemies i love enemies because it is the power of my enemies that make me strong it makes me strong. As the old Kiroshim would say, it causes me to bend my knees, not because uh, we are weak, but because we rely upon the strength of the assurance of the Torah of Yah. And that's why he has given us a Torah to give us direction, directives, that we obey with all of our bosom, with everything that's in us. Your shoe is the power of that living Torah, that he is alive in Yisrael. When the witness of that testimony is alive in us, then truly we are the head and not the tail. And I don't give a damn what weapon is formed against our minds, the legitimacy of our calling. It shall not prosper. It shall not shalach. Uh, he shall not overcome us, but we shall stand in the might. And that's what we need in this hour. We need that strength, that koach. The koach of Yah, it is the strength of his wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding. That it is of the simplicity of practicality in our lives. Not that we are trying to perform it, but by the ruach hacho that we are led. To perform what Yah commands us. Not out of the breath of this religious whore. Learn from her breast that she has fed us. She's filthy. She's a vile Jezebel. We greet you all our friends. Wherever you're listening. Our hot Mariana there in Indiana. Ach, thy weed straw in Indiana. We appreciate all your kindness, your gifts. I will support all that you do, also my precious Ach Tesner, and all of the Hart family there in Tampa, Florida. We greet you all, Yabrak, for your faithfulness, your kindness, your gifts, that you all constantly uh, support the labor here, that we can stay on the live streams, and whatever Yah commands us or the direction he instructs us to go in. My precious friend, our fellow labor there in in McKinney, Texas, Dallas, Ach Yaakov, our precious Ach Yaakov there in Jacksonville. I do want to greet you all, our Ima Miriam Oprah there in, in the Baltimore, uh, Maryland area there in Maryland. All of you, if I forget you, don't be offended. Our precious Ach and his Achot McGee there in, in Illinois as well as... Uh, uh, I Kim there and all of you our friends our listeners we greet you all we greet you our Ach Wim and your Isha Tiffany there in Tennessee may the strength of your rest upon you mightily this Shabbat may he cause your hearts to be aroused that you seek out the pleasures of his truth his imats the revelation of the power of his Hamashiach Yoshua Hamashiach. So we greet you all, Yisrael. We greet our Ach Dawid and his precious Is Shaw Suzy there in Yorkshire, uh, Britain. Also our friend Ach Cliff Wadi and his Is Shaw Rose there in St. Louis, Missouri. We want to greet you all. I'm not forgetting your name, but if I just do not mention you, it's not because you've forgotten our uh, hosts there in uh, Aritya in New Jersey and all of Yisraya scattered throughout the nations of the earth. 
wherever you are that will hear this broadcast, this message in any form or any message that is on Yahweh's Sword website, it will enrich you, it will bless you, and it will certainly above all strengthen you in the ways of Yah in His Haderach, our precious Ach. And those that are gathered with him out there in Los Angeles, California, my precious Ach, and Charles Davis, and all of the Ach that are gathered with him, it will not be a brutal attack. We are trying to impel. We are trying to destroy the power of our will, the flesh, that oppose Yisrael, that oppose the Abba of Yisrael. And so that is what we're here to do, dis to dismantle, to destroy, to bring it down to the dungeons of hell. That the will of that will be consumed in the fire of Yah. That it will not rise up against the Most High, but that we are not compelled. But there is a pleasure to please our Abba, that we are willing. And we bring before him the free will offerings to satisfy his bosom. So again to you that are gathered with our precious Ach Charles there in the Los Angeles, California area. Greetings to you all again. Uh, there's one thing about him. He says uh, that everything is on time. When they come in, they are quiet. We get order and we proceed. We have the Torah. We pass out tracts. He said to me the other day as I talked with him, I said to him, Brother Ach Zakhain, if you need anything, just call us or write and we will get that to you. He said, But Re Ach, uh, I work in a. Ba I said to him, We got an excellent copier machine. He said, But we got a copier machine here. I work in the bank and it does. He, I said, Okay, you do what you're doing there. So he makes copies, give them out, pass them along. And he said that it, it, it's growing a little fast. I said, Let it grow. We'll find us a place. We'll go right in the hood there. $75 a week, we will go right there and uproot and tear down the strongholds of hell. That's what we will do, Yisraya. And so we greet you, our Akchars, and all that are gathered with him, uh, the Ach, the Achotz. And sometimes they run out of the house only because they simply do not, uh, or my speech is not appeasing. It doesn't satisfy all men. That's why Yahshua said, why do you do not understand what I say? Because this is the carnal generation. It is one that is driven by this passion, this proclivity of one's uh, vile lust and this dissatisfaction for Yah. I will have him my way as an ice cream cone. I will eat like and choose the flavors I like. It shall not be that way, Yisrael. It's not going to pan out that way if you believe that. You're not going to elect and deposit what is uh, acceptable and advantageous to you. Uh, and then the other you're going to reject. You are a damn fool if you do that. For your sure is the wholeness of Torah. He is the whole stay of lechem, the bread. He is the living bread. And when we began to truly dine on that, then we become alive. Not this dead bread that we eat. They eat the matter in the wilderness, in the midst bar. They said, what is this? And yet it kept them alive. Nobody gained weight. Nobody's feet grew. The shoes were on their feet. It renewed them. And that is the power of this Torah truth in Yeshua. It prepares the feet. And our feet are short. Come on, Yisrael, yeah, the only thing that didn't grow that should have is that leba, the mind. Did not adapt to the commands of Almighty Yah. And that's why they were relegated to the conditions that they were. And so it is with Yisrael today. We're stumbling, we're falling. Uh, 
We have an excuse for everything that Yah says. But not for this old damned of a wicked corrupt flesh. We make every kind of damn provision there is. Satisfy the belly of the God. Damn your wicked God. He's a damned of a beast. You be El, your lords too. Damn them all. Damn every one of them. For your shell. I'm not timid. For I know that as a Hiroshim, I'm going to judge the fallen angels. We will judge the Melachim. We will judge the earth uh, according to the Torah, the instructions, the directions, the directives of Almighty Yah that are predicated upon the mitzvah, upon the mitzvah. And we're going to judge the earth. So if I'm going to do that, you can trust me. I have the strength, the intestinal spiritual fortitude to judge the smallest matters among us. And to me, a damn God is a small matter and a Baal. Damn them all. The Lord, the Jesus, the Jesus, the Christo, damn them all. Is either I will speak the truth or I will speak things that are predicated and based upon fascism. We're not a generation of people that continue in the way of Yah. We become very despondent. I will, my friend. There's a loss of interest in the ways of Yah. And then because we do not continue in the Torah of Yah, we have no comprehension of the depths of the power of his imat, his truth, the utterance of his loins. Because when one comes to the fullness of that knowledge, he's free. From who? From him. Above all things. Free from the will of his own will that he seeks to please in all things. I received a telephone call early this morning. I generally do not answer on the Shabbat, but for some reason I answered. And one calling from Louisiana. That there is nothing she can do to please her relatives. I said, then you're doing it wrong anyway. You should not seek to please them. I'm under such agonizing oppression, 65 years old. I have been a staunch Catholic all my life. And all of a sudden, Yah breathes this revelation of simplicity of his nature upon me. And I cannot go back. So there is opposition against me. What do I do? Of course, you know my response. You should not give a damn what they say or their response to you. You please the yeah. There is an impediment there, my ish. I say, well, then make him some gambalai without the pork fats, the shrimp, and take care of his belly that way. She says, I do that. Then I say, just be humble. If it's pleasing to live with a man, submit yourself. Hallelujah. There's one thing about this generation. They want to show everyone that they believe they have an excellence of truth, and they really don't have a damn thing. They have hurts. They regurgitate based upon what they have heard without the ru'ak of Yah. They're just simply a sounding piece without any substance. As I said to you all, my friends, I know that my Ach Mikaya, he is very critical of me when I began a process and I do not finish it. He thinks that I should preach a little longer than I do. But I had said that I would continue 
There is one verse in Gilgal, our revelation. I want to read and I want to continue from that excerpt. It's going to take a while. I said to you all, I had 20, 28 pages, but I got 30 pages. Well, that doesn't look like a lot. I tell you what, when you began to turn those right there, you will see. You cannot understand one excellent speech of Yah unless you go back to the very sheets. You think that Yah is, was your sure was a revelation unto Yisrael? Sure he was. What is a revelation? Let me use the simplicity of this word. It is, the word is gach gala. It is when the eyes of the spiritual ability of a man, his eye in, when it is uncovered. When there is no covering with his flesh, his will, the darkness of his sins, do not diminish the power of the excellence of your truth. And so there's a reservoir of liveliness or life high in his bosom, life that flows from the depths of his bosom when he hears the counsel of Yah. It's like a child when a child hears the alarm of the sound of the avats, the ema coming in the door. They get excited. They get fire under their feet. I've watched them. I've watched this man with his children. I've watched him. I'm looking. They don't see me. When they see that vehicle pulls up, she began to do like that. I've seen that in the children. And so it is with Yah's truth, with his Torah. There should be an excitement. Hell, we get excited over Walmart, Kmart, and Dollar Mart, nickel store, dime store, and the rag store. Ah, it ain't not gonna take nothing back. You get that. Yeah, when it comes to hearing the sweet sound of that excellent name, that his Hamashiach is revealed, we become dumbfound, don't we? I'm not here to speak to please the proclivity or the desire, the passion of your flesh. You can forget that. And if that's what you're looking for, you better find you one of those pseudos, pseudo messengers. As ain't not going to do that. As ain't not going to do that. Hallelujah. There's a dearth in the house of Yisrael. And there's a reason that it has been poured out upon us. There's a reason why there should be a time. There shall be a time like no other time. I want to say this, Yisrael, before I proceed. It's not of the descriptive superlatives and the analytical aspect of how things shall be revealed that we have heard from the laws, mouths of these charlatans that have been birthed out of hell. There's been a treaty in the loins of their ema. They were raised up to bring death, to be the usherers of lies. But I don't believe that we are such a damnable, silly people. Can I ask you a question then? Was there by one the name of Yehuda Iscariot that walked with Yahshua HaMashiach? Did he not call him the son of perdition? Was there not two that were born, Esav and Yahob? Was there not one born for death and destruction? Did not Yah hate him? Sure he did. Sure he did. People don't realize, Ma'ach Yusufiha, that Yahshua is the Torah, he is the power of this living truth of Yah. It is by the power of his mouth that Yah caused the strong winds, the storms, the pestilent death. Yahshua is death. He is death. He said, you tell that dirty whore Isabel, I gave for vile children space of time to repent. And there was no shub. 
They did not turn away from their actions. They did not turn around. They resisted my mandate. You're sure, say you tell them, I'm going to kill every damn last one of them. The damn babies, they're tough. The grown-ups, I'm killing them all from 9 to 90. We don't want to buy that. Because this whole has taught us this little picturesque picture of him. He's coming uh, in the vengeance of Yah. And so the dirty hoe has given you this little effeminate faggot, Jesus. Regardless to what complexion they paint him, this little effeminate faggot, Jesus. And yet we don't see the strength of the Hamashiach. You're not going to betroth yourself unto another and think that death will not abide in your house. What is the reason for all of this? Why shall this be, Yah? There's a reason and a purpose. And you're not going to find that out by reading one verse in Gilyana. This is not a few days of labor right here. You understand? This is weeks right here. That's, that, that's not a few days of labor. Simeon said, you want to post them? No, I'm not going to post them because they're not going to read them. That's, that's, not, that, that's a lot of labor right there. And so these simple truths do not come by twiddling your thumb. I want us to understand above all things what I labor in this book it is the same way I labor when I work it's no different I said to Ak Yosef on yesterday I said well we'll stop at noon well I could have worked until three or four because I sense that energy, not working to get out of work or seeing what little I can do. But I love to work. I love to work. And the more intense, the better it is for me. Because when I see a vision in my mind, I must accomplish it. I'm not one that loves. And that's why we're becoming drunk and sedated in our own damn corrupt flesh. Because we love to sleep, we love to fold our hands, and then poverty come upon us. We're not willing to seek after Yah. No, I love to work. It is one thing in my constitution, no man will work harder than me. He will work harder than me. But he will not work harder than me. You didn't hear that. No man will work harder than me. He will work harder than me. But he will not work harder than me. Yah has a job trying to get this house together, doesn't he? So he needs men that up that same passion. That we labor in the vineyard and the bushes are pruned properly that they may bear fruit. And we must utilize the chere, the sword that cuts, the two-edged sword that cuts. And no one and nothing goes unsafe, nothing. And so the projection of our spiritual dynamics uh, we can literally look at our physical activities uh, and you can discern the nature of your own bosom. If you're lazy as hell, you're lazy with Yah. And that's a fact. It is not even debatable because I won't let you debate that with me. Because any time we are trying to defend a negative... And something is twisted in your damn mind. We need the mind of Yoshua. I want to read one verse before I proceed from here. It's found. Now I'm going to begin. I'm going to begin in Gileana. You must set 
the stage. You must progressively move from one episode to the next in order for you to understand this. It's not about what we have learned. You think that Yah is giving this revelation to these liars, these serpents of hell? As a young man, they would always say that the fire will be the nuclear bombs uh, uh, of, that have been created. No, that's not the fire of Yah. The issue of Yah is beyond supernatural. It is what uh, it is expressed in terminology uh, that, is, uh, that is acceptable to our mentality. It is the divine nature of that which proceed from the altar of Yah. So the nuclear bombs cannot do the destructive nature of what the fire, the ish of Yah, as our Zakhin Yarabiya, he has been speaking to us concerning the sevenfold voices school of Yah. It is the power of that voice. The flame of that voice that, that even divides and of course, we are so lackadaisy, uh, our minds uh, are caught up on everything uh, but Yah. Yeah. And until we begin to be honest with ourselves, uh, we will never progress in the ways of Yah. You will never see the awe, the light of the power in our bosom. Yeah. And so we began to grow stagnant and dull. Hell, we rejoice over pecan pie instead of over, over the Torah. Let me begin. It's amazing because we that think that we are above that, we are the ones that are guilty as hell. And we think, not me, it's you. That's why you're defending you. Not my mother, my brother or sister, but it's me, oh yeah. I need to be corrected. We are a self-righteous generation. We think so highly of ourselves. We elevate ourselves when we, when we know we're weak. And it's wrong. Let me begin here to open the book. I want to read this in Gilgal, our revelation. One verse here, chapter 13. And verse 17, and in this process, I want to bring clear, definitive. I want to bring clear, definitive. It is not obscured. The vision of it is seen clearly. Your eye in, your spiritual and physical mentality of the concept of the Most High, yeah, it is open. There is nothing that dulls that. There is nothing that uh, impede the process uh, of that visual and spiritual concept of the reality of the Most High, yeah. Yeah. Nothing. No impediments. Nothing that blunts the beauty of Yah. And so I began here in Revelation, Gilgana, chapter 13, and verse 17, and I will conclude here in the weeks, the months to come. I have 30 pages of Torah teaching here, and I cannot do that in one day. We need the chukmah, the wisdom, the experience of Yah. The only way we're going to experience Yah is through Torah. Is through Torah. That's the only way that Lil Esha will experience his Avat through obedience of the proclamation, the mandates of his home. He must have that. Wisdom, the experience is principle. It is a beautiful thing. But in all our procuring, uh, all that is bestowed upon us, uh, we need to get being, being uh, understanding, uh, the power to discern whether it's of Yah or whether it's not. You may not understand nor have the experience of wisdom with the matter, but you know that it is of Yah. You know that Yah has uttered that. 
So the messenger speak your own bosom will not deceive you. Will not allow your own hidden agenda to deceive you. You may not understand the revelation, your, the gala or your eyes may open. They may not be open to the, the intricate power of that. But you know that is truth. As the old ones would say, I know that, I know that. I, they will not allow it to be abandoned. No one could eradicate that from their bosom. Because when they heard it, when they shemak, when their ears were open, there was a spirit of obedience to comply and to obey what their ears had revealed. No, they did not know as much as the one that even quoted it or brought out truth of the matter, but they knew that it was the truth. No, they could not read or write, but they knew that that was the truth. No, they had no intellectual proudness, no educational fortitude or a background, but they knew that it was the truth. We can even hear unless Yah opens our ears. Beginning here in the book of Revelation, in chapter 13, and this is what it says. Verse 17, there's a time of great crises that shall arise. There's a reason. And I must walk us through this process for you to understand this at the conclusion. There are events, there are spiritual kingdom powers that are already raised and they are warring against the mind of one mind, the mind of Ichad, the mind of Yeshua HaMashiach. It doesn't give a damn about your natural carnal mind. It wants to eradicate the mind of Yah from among Yisraya. And so in the midst of all of this great calamity, there's a strength to one people. And we must have this strength. It is not you buying bread or water. That is one of the most damnable, deceitful lies that I have ever learned in all of my days. I will make this clearly known to Yisrael. And so the one by the name of Yachahan, he's there waiting for the promises, the daba, the word, the utterance of Yah that the Melach shall speak profoundly with great clarity unto him and yet it is hidden for a season and to be revealed in the latter times only to those that Yah has elected to reveal it to not these damn twisted liars not these perverts like the bitty hens not the Al Sharptons or the Jesse Jacksons not the T.D. Jakes, but to those that are of the simple nature that Yah has elected them, uh, He has raised them up that they will hear and understand. And so the messenger speaks unto us here. Revelation 13, 17. He gives us a picture of the chaotic disturbance that shall take place. And he emphatically says here, we don't even understand this, none of us. But I will make it plain to us in the weeks, the months to come. He uses the word and that no, no, none, nothing, no possibility now. Do you hear that? That that's, that's awful powerful now. That no man, you tell me those that are in the strangest of land, and those that are from the far reach of obscurity, whereby there is no power of modern technology, it means every man. Every man. You think this is bread and water? You will know it is a bread and living water and the living bread, but not this mayim that we drink. It is not the lechem that we eat. He says, and that no more might buy or cannot he cannot buy now these two words i already find i want to read it according to the definitive of the lexicon the hebrew dictionary we tend to analyze things according to our own intellectual proudness and we think 
We know what it means, but we don't. And once you understand the wording and the phraseology, then you can search the Torah to define it and to see the total picture of the matter and why this is stated here. It doesn't have a damn thing to do with the biscuit or Dunkin' Donuts. He said in that no, no, no exception, no man might be able to Khana. I want to define that. Khana is of Yah. It originated from Yah. It is his power of creating, but this is the essence of it here, and redeeming. That is what it is. No man, will, when you buy something, do you not, is there not an exchange to redeem? Both are redeeming. It is redeeming his people of acquiring knowledge, wisdom, how to walk erect in the correct counsel of Almighty Yah. It is his power to redeem. No man will be able to buy, to redeem. No man will be able to buy or to redeem unless there is a mark. Unless there is a mark. That no man might be able to buy or to sell. And that is ga'al. Ga'al. Just like gala. G-A-W hyphen L-A-W. G-A-W hyphen A-L. Ga'al. Ga'al. Now I want to define that. I want to define these two words. Uh, and I may do that and refresh our minds repeatedly as we go on. And then once we began to place each piece in its correct place, you will understand this as you walk. And no man will be able to gael, to sell. This is gael. It is redeem. It is the act of the kinsman redeemer. You understand? Kinsman redeemer. It is one that avenge. It is one that revenges. And it is one that is the ransom. It has always before me in the context of Gilgarna 13. You got to understand 12 and 13 to understand this verse. How that we got to, you're not going to be able to buy food. And things like that. This has nothing to do with someone feeling uh, the passion or the desire of their hunger. It has nothing to do with that. There are going to be famine whereby there will be nothing to eat anyway because of the sin. The sword has not left the house of Israel. We have been wicked. We have walked contrary to Almighty Yah. Yet he has placed the throne of David among us in the midst. He has placed upon that chasse, that throne, his melech, the king of kings, the mighty one, a mighty one, the power of all power, Yoshua HaMashiach. And we reject that. And there's a reason we reject that, Yisrael. And so we have all these little splitter groups today. They're rejecting the power of Yoshua. Damn their wickedness. And the fatness of their corruption, their corrupt pigs. Hallelujah. So I'll read that again in plain terminology. And that no man will be able to buy Khana. He will not be able to sell Ga'al unless save. He that has the Uth, the mark, and the name of the beast, and the number of his name. He must possess that and you don't understand that just by reading you got to go back because it's one thing that Yah has always done he has always placed a tasneeth a pattern of all things and you must go back that's why as I was thinking this morning I said Yah you cause Livy that Ummah that tribe not to have any possessions of riches Owning no land, that they will not have to be caretakers of land and gardening because uh, that exacts an enormous amount of time. 
that he would be the provider and all of the male ones that were raised out of the loins of that promises of the promises of Yah they shall be the ones that will give their minds over unto the Torah day and night meditating upon the word they're not out working the bean fields or the cotton fields they're not on a nine to five not like these lazy fat dogs today. They're greedy pigs. They're serpents of hell. And so their minds could be solely given over the Torah. And then a time for their family to understand the beauty of the family of Yisra'ya when they are in that cohesiveness of the order and the government of the Torah. The inner dependency, the inner action, the, the pleasure that one brings to one another. It's a damn shame. Because Yisra'ya brings no pleasure to one another. The damn wicked world excites us more than the abode of a Kirosha. It is rights, man. We have missed the mark. So no man will be able to buy or sell unless he have this oath, this allegiance, this desire, passion, and will, the mark of the beast and the name of the beast. Damn all their secretive organizations, the Masons, damn the Masons, the New World Order, damn the New World Order. The Bilbergers, damn the Bilbergers. The Club of Rome, all of them. It doesn't mean a knickers worth of hogs fat to me. This is the Torah of Yah. This is the word of Yah. All things. Listen, Yisrael Yah. Yah is the one that has ears and has orchestrated all things. He knew the end before the beginning. You understand? And because we are so shallow and so weak, we don't, we don't possess the comprehension of the Torah of God because we all have been hoodwinked. And every last one of us have been deceived by our own nature, and our own passion, our own desire in many aspects of life. And yet through all of that, God has not allowed you to be bewitched. That you will not disavow the truth of God. The man is bewitched, he cannot obey the Torah of Yah. That's why these damn Jesus thumpers and Lord to promote us. And thumping these damn lies. No liar is going, anyone that loves to make a lie, they're going to enter into the Melchutz, the kingdom, the kingdom revelation of Yah. It's not going to be. And we think because we can read sequentially, that we have understanding it doesn't work that way there's a sword in the house of yisraya and i will show us why we must understand why is this why this is a time known as a Yaqub zarah jacob's trouble is it not yes. well what got him in trouble because he tried to defy the husband man and to do things on his own are we not doing that we can see that in the lineage of Yisra'ya, even through the throne of Yisra'ya. That's why you had to sit one that was perfect and complete uh, in the manifesto of the Torah. That his passion, his will, above all was to please Yah. Not some damn lords. I want to begin with an intrigue, uh, informative revelation here in the book of 2 Shemuel, Shemuel Yav, 2 Samuel. Hallelujah. Chapter 12, verse 9. This is when David, when he was confronted by Nathan. Nathan, his name implies he is the giver of Yah's Torah. And what he had done to the light or the strength of Yah's light there in Yisra'ah, he had procured unto his bayats the sword, the wrath, the very indignation of Yah. And the Nobi speaks to him profoundly, prophetically, uh, with great utterance of his loins, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 9. 
He says unto David, come on, the name David means beloved. He is beloved of Yah. Is not your show the beloved of Yah? Does not, do not the writers, the Shulishim, the apostles of the writing of the Brit Hadassah, do not, they call us beloved? He is the beloved of Yah. And he speaks here in 2 Samuel. In chapter 12, verse 9, he speaks unto David, he says, Wherefore, he says, you have uh, bazaar, you have despised. You have held the counsel of Yah in contempt. You have bazaar, you have uh, great disdain for Yah's counsel. You have uh, despised the commandment of Yah. You have despised the Dabar, the instruction of Yah, the counsel of the mouth of his Nobi. We are a generation that despise the commandment, the utterance of Yah, his speech, his messenger's proclamation by the power of the Ruach HaKodash. He says, not only have you despised it, you have bazaar, you have disdain for it. You have contempt for it. You said it doesn't mean a damn thing to me. I got saved under the name of Jesus. Saved from what? You're still wicked. You defy the misvah of Yah. You're a damn liar. He commands us to zakah shabbat, shumach If you don't keep the shabbat of Yah, you're a damn liar. You have reached the age of accountability. You deny that. You deny his name. You fraternize with some damn pagan Jesus. You are a damn liar. I don't care who you are. No liar has gone into the kingdom. We can think it's a small matter. But that's all right. We'll see. Yah says the day we his beloved. You have bazaar. You have disdain and contempt for my commandment. What I speak to you. The words of utterance. He says... And you did evil, you did ra. There's this malignant cancer in us that propel us to do wrong against the Torah. But we know that it's right, sadiq, righteous to do. We're driven by the law of our flesh. We will compromise for sons and daughters and mama and daddy. We don't give a damn about Yah. We make no righteous provisions for him. We got sympathy for everyone, but not Yah. Isn't that the first commandment? To love Yah with all your mind, your lava, all your nefesh, all your chach, all of your love. And then, the one that is lack unto that one, to love your your neighbor as yourself. Because we don't give a damn about oneself. You will know you love you because you want to stay clean. Who doesn't want to take a bath? You said that you would not take baths if you didn't have to. I would not. Waste of time. I would spend time doing something else and bathing. But I know that there is, that is the process of refreshing me physically. That's why I take them. But if I did not have to, I would do just like the cows in the field. Just like the sheep. We are so silly. This is a silly generation. So when one doesn't love oneself, how are we going to love Yah? Or love our neighbors? We can't do it, Yisra'ah. He says, so you have evil in your eye, in your sight, your mental driven desire, your spiritual desire is to do evil against the commands of Almighty God. Anytime our minds are projected, isn't this one that shall be raised up out of the darkness and the dungeons of hell? Is this passion and desire to dethrone and to defy the mitzvah of the commandments of Yah? Will he not even seek to change time, days, and the appointed seasons of Yah? That's why you have this nation, nation that we're in so damn twisted. Everyone got the appropriate day for the Moadim. They will not listen to a true messenger because they think they know everything. They don't want someone to say you're a damn liar. You're wrong. I'm not afraid to say that. 
He has given me strength for a season. I know that my strength will be abated in his time, in the process of Yah's time. I have no problem with that. I watch even as when people come to the site, and I like that. You would think that they would take my messages, wouldn't you? They're taking his messages. And they're posting him. I said, I like that, yeah. That's nice. I like that. Sure I do. I said, I like that. So when I go and click on, it's him. Why him? I'm the big chief. I'm the honcho. I understand season and time. Time to live, the time to preach, and the time to sit down, and the time to die. That's right. I'm no fool. And because of our immaturity, we don't like that. Our stupidity is pronounced. Yah said we were satish. I will, my friend. Let me move on. He said, you have done that which is evil in your sight. And look at this. He says, you have nacha, you have slain and destroyed. Uh, look at this man. He said, Uriah, you have killed uh, this beautiful man. Uriah is the expression of Yahweh's light and flame. That's what his name implies. He was the flame of Yah, even in the kingdom of David. He had the warrior's mentality, the spirit of a warrior. When all things that were to his advantage, to lay with this silky smooth woman, that Sheba, beautiful, that has soaked herself in the precious oils, and the flagrant of her skin was so precious, he chose to sleep at the doorstep of the Melach. We well, could have gone home and ate some of the best of the baked foods and fruits of the land. When his mind was disoriented, he was drunken in his flesh. There was the passion that was greater for the king. Yeah. That's a lie in the bosom. In the shout to enjoy the breast of his wife in his youth. There was something greater. It was the love of Torah. And this malignant spirit of Daewit that's trying to separate him. That's what this malignant, this cancer is going to do. You're not going to understand things by reading and underlining here. You underline it, you don't even know what it means. That's our nature. Zuoriya, the light and the flame of Yah, he had that flame put out because it was a witness against his sins. It was a witness against his vile Nida, this minister, unclean rag, filthy, bloody rag of a woman that he had bathed himself in. You have said you have gone against my commandments and you have killed or not. They are going this world. You shall cause two precious Navi prophets to rise up. Are they not going to kill them in the streets of Yerushalayim? I'm going to teach you on that, but I will give you more definitive on that and give you a revelation of that matter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, you have killed Uriah. He said, this hit thee with the harap, the sword, and has taken, you have locha. You have taken this man's Isha, his wife. And that's what Yisra'ya is doing. We have procured unto ourselves uh, this Isabel, the slot of a spirit uh, that allows us to do everything we want to do, uh, define the commandments of Almighty Yah. That's why precious women are out of place today. They're loud and the world has trained them to be loud, to be bodacious, and to make the man look like he is nothing but a rag. That's the truth. That's why they're raising the women up on jobs to put them over men. That's why they're relegating men and taking away their damn power, their masculinity. And taking their strength and robbing them. And that's why the women today talk to men in any way they want to. 
Their mouths are foul and unclean and speak in ways that are not appropriate. They're loud and bodacious. It is the truth. And so we love that spirit today. I was thinking, if you recall, I recall as a young man, there's one thing that women, uh, and, and the women, when there was a faggot in the neighborhood, almost like they love, they, 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 they love being around faggots. I will, man. I don't give a damn how this generation responds. They love being around faggots. They kept faggots in their pocketbooks. There were one that was here with us, had a damn faggot pictures hanging in the house. Sure she did. Dressed like a filthy dog, like a woman. Sure was. Damn faggot. I said, take that down. That's wrong. And so you notice faggots are loud like that too. Or I'd give you a piece of my mind, you, you filthy dog. There's nothing you can tell me. So they have robbed the beauty of the woman. That's what the woman is. She is the assembly. She is the tabernacle. She is, she is the beauty. She is the, she is the very pleasantry of what the tabernacle is. She has been betrothed unto Yah. She, she lays her head in his bosom and speaks sweet things. Read Shira Shiram, the Psalms of Solomon, Bath of Zion, and learn the ways of a woman. And so they have broken down the strength of Yah. That was innate and birthed in them through this religious harlot, this whore that we're in. And takes away their beauty. I'm not going to stop talking like this. So where's the beauty of the assembly? Damn the church because that's a whole house. That's where the faggots cohabitate. I receive a letter from uh, my Zachin Davis there in California. All these suits against what we call the Church of God in Christ, these are nothing but stomping grounds of Horem. These damn Jesus temples are nothing but whore grounds. And what you have found, these dirty beasts, these damn dirty bastards, they call themselves Hebrews, they're taking those damn dirty principles and trying to incorporate them in the ways of Yah. And because they're immature, they're lustful men. They had no strength with women in their days. They called themselves having two or three wives. And got the women out there pimping them like lazy. They, they lay on the lazy buttocks and they're pimping their women. That's what they're doing. Because they're full of their damn lust. And the women are so laden with sin and they're so silly. They can't even discern truth. You may think you want truth and you want to hear truth, but there are many that say that until they experience me. And they find a way to move away quickly, and I like that. Hallelujah. Can I say this? I'm going to preach a little bit. It's amazing that I was talking about issue how when women come here, they think that the men should be all over them speaking and talking. And I'm talking about married women. Why would they want that? When I take my Isha with me, I want her to be quiet. And she knows to be quiet. I don't want her embracing other men. Why is it that? Because undoubtedly they, they have not a man. They don't know what a man is. They've laid on their back. And that's it. That's not love. Faggots do that. Dogs do that. Get real with me. Whores do that. With 20 a day. That's love? All right then. But love produced that. It's right to do that. Silly people. He says, you have killed this man with the sword. You have taken this wife. And you have harach. You have slain him with the sword. You are the perpetrator of the children of Ammon. And this is what Yah says here in verse 10. I got to lay this down to move. Yah says, now therefore the harap, the sword, death, the sword, shall never sue. It shall never depart. It shall never be removed. It shall never be abolished. He said, the sword shall never be removed 
from your bayat, from your house. Does not your shoe sit on the shoe throne of thy wheat? And death, the sword was not removed from that house. Did he not die by the hands of those that rejected the Torah of Yah? And they impaled him on that stake. He says, uh, it shall not depart from your house. Why? Because you have despised me. None of us despise or bazaya, do we? We don't have the disdain for Yah. That's what Yah said. That's what the Nobi said to Dawid. Of all of the great testimonies you have seen the hand of Yah, Yah said to Dawid, his beloved, you have despised. You lay me before contempt. You have disdain. There is a hatred in your bosom for me. When one says that they love God, I have no problem with that. When one says that they love Yah and keep not the mitzvah, there is no honor of the Torah, they're damn lawyers. When they thump the damn Sunday worship, when they call upon a damn pagan, they're damn liars. They're their father, the devil. He was a murderer, a thief, a liar from the beginning because he did not abide in truth. And so when they speak to liars, they're of their father. Oh, baby, I love Jesus. I, I don't give a damn. You don't love y'all. You buy their damn lies. They have contempt. You have said that I weed the sword. Shall never sue. It shall never be removed. It shall never be abolished. It shall never be abandoned. And look at this precious living Torah that came. And yet he was in peril. I'm glad too. So I lay down my life for his life. I'm going to die as and Uriah. I want the light of Yah. What light? The testimony of Yahshua and the flame of that to shine. And when I go down to death, let it rise up. Let it sense everything it destroyed. Just like our Zakai said to us. They were all cast into the fire. But the fire did not come upon them. There's a fire that is coming. It's going to pronounce and announce the mighty one. That's why the powers of hell are lighting up there. There are regions of darkness to try to be competitive and to emulate what Yah does. Everything is vital in the Torah. Every word. That's why Yahshua said man should not live on my bread alone when he was tried by hell, but by every. Every word that proceeds, proceeds. Out of the mouth, the theft of Yah. Yeah. We have committed an atrocity. Yeah. We have despised, we have bore, bazaar. We have contempt for Yah. We don't like when He speaks to us. He said, you have despised me. Does it say that? Or is that the format of the phraseology in your book? Is this not Yah talking? Is not Nothan the messenger of Yah? The one that is the giver, is he not was Yahshua the giver? Is he not the giver of life? That's not the Torah gives us life? And it begins with judgment? That's why Yahshua says, Come on, I didn't come to judge this wicked world. I didn't come to condemn it because it's already condemned. Think not that I came to condemn this world. And the next verse says, because this wicked world is condemned, it is damned. It is Russia. It is wicked. It's condemned already. He didn't have to condemn it. He was seeking to save the house. He came to buy us back. He came to sell himself. To be the Gala, to be the, the Redeemer. The Gala, to be the Redeemer. He was our kinsman Redeemer. And we're going to need that redeeming power in the hour that we're headed toward. We're going to need the pure Shaha, the worship of Yah. Wherever you hear no one speak there, there's a song, there's a, there's a shiram, the shiram of your feel, you are the songs of, of gladness and rejoices. Uh, they will take you constantly. Whether you're sick or broken, 
you sing to the excellence of our Maria. We rejoice in the presence of our Abba in the testimony of your shoe. We must have that testimony. And that's what the enemy is trying to do, take the testimony from your bosom. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to take that from your bosom. Hear this. Because you have spies me, and you have taken the wife of Uriah, the one that is my light and flame, the Hitti, to be your wife. What does the wife represent? It, she represents the one that you espouse to. Those that were in the, the assembly of Tatira, were they not espoused unto Isabel in Revelation? There were men and women, and they were espoused unto her, and they had become espoused. They, they, she was their husband, man. That's why in this vile, wicked nation, whereby men call themselves married men, these vile children of hell, and these butch, bull, dagger women, how is that going to last? When they both are bodacious and vile, Two little effeminate faggot boys. And so we have exposed ourselves uh, unto the imagery as our Zarkane was bringing out to us. Uh, unto the Selim, uh, to the images of gods and idols. Uh, and we form in them in our mind to make them picturesque uh, unto us. Uh, and we draw near to that. Uh, that's what we did. Uh, he saw this man's beautiful wife. Uh, and he began to lust in his heart. Uh, and he defied the commandment of Yah. Because he, bazaar, he despised Yah. Uh, we are the ones that will testify. Oh, I love him. I will never despise him. We are dirty liars. If a man says he loves you and keeps not his commandments, his mitzvah, he's a liar. This is love that you keep the mitzvah of Yah. He's a damn dirty liar. Come on, back to Tizaya and say she loves Yah and she's refractory and rebellious. She's a damn dirty Jezebel of a liar. How about that? And I don't take it back. She's a beast. And he's an effeminate thing without the strength of Yah. That has nothing to do with what's going to come. But that's why we're in the hell we're in now. Because of our forefathers. Because of your Akub. I will change your name from your Akub to Yisra'ah. Now, you have prevailed by the power of Yah. And that's the only way we're going to prevail through the strength of this living testimony. We're not prevailing any other way. And so Yah has elected by this kind of format, by the foolishness of, uh, of the Bezurach, of the teaching of the Torah, that he shall your say, deliver them that believe. So he has chosen a mythology uh, that is not the most appeasing to man. It doesn't generate excitement. Walmart bench here, clothing, we get excited. It's quiet, it doesn't say anything, it doesn't speak back. You go to the shop and write, oh, I got this, oh, give me that one, give me this one. Ah. It is the truth. But yet when the Torah, of the declaration of Yah, we don't get excited. Man, give me that hat, I thought, man, it's five dollars. But yet when the helmet of his assurance of salvation, we don't give a damn. We don't say, give me that helmet, put that on me. No, that's what I want man to see, not a brim. I want him to see the helmet of my salvation. Now, your shach, my deliverance. I said, because you have gone contrary to what I commanded you, you have, bazaar, you have hated me. And we are a nation that hate Yah. And so what was all this about? Was not this a warning unto Dawid and the whole house of Yisra'ya? So we must begin with the process of warning. We must begin with that process of this judicated type of law that's in our conscience, in our minds, what is predicated upon, how it was built, and how it has taken root in us, and who are the orchestrators of that. Well, I don't believe that way. You can't believe that way. I believe this way. There is only one Imunah. 
There is only one mikvah, only one immersy. There's only one abba. There's only one boom, one mind. We should think, act, and walk the same way. Well, I'm an individual. You are a silly individual. Everything that you do, don't you know there are millions and billions have done it before you? I think differently. You think no different than anyone else. Your thinking is based upon the, the parameter about a thousand, two thousand words. And within that or with that construct, you formulate everything about who you are and what you are. So you think you're the only one that's ever done that? This is a stupid generation. When they say that to me, I say, you, you know you're silly. You're stupid. Who are you to call stupid? I know you're stupid. You are stupid. You silly little man. You silly woman. You silly. You are mature woman. And I don't take down. You see, your paradigm has been built upon a few hundred words. That's it. And everything is shaped upon a few hundred descriptives of how you can convey it. I don't care how you say it, it all ends up the same. Yah's going to kill you. Well, uh, kill me, Yah, he said, or Yah's going to kill me. I don't care how you try to express it. it the results are the same. He's going to kill this wicked generation. He is the one that is unleashed. He is the one that is ordained. He is the one that orchestrated this, this contingent of hell. Because we have given ourselves over to every kind of whoredom. And our minds are a mind that is small. We are the oath of the world. We love the world. Because we love the things that are in the world. And one of the things, all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes, the pride of life. What? These things are not of Yah. And if any man loves these things, he covers these things because there is no hub, the love of Yah in that man. And so that's where you have the proliferation of these little effeminate faggot spirits rising up. It takes a man, it takes a man like Uriah. He has to have a flame. He can't be a little puppet, a little weak emblem of, uh, emblem soul of a thing. Uh, I will man. Let's have a strength. And he placed his sheath or his sword in his sheath. His confidence, come on. Uriah knew who he was. Hallelujah. Those stand behind every strong man is a strong woman. I know people don't buy that, but when a man has a great strength, he has a, he has a woman that walks in the submissiveness and the order of Yah. She's obedient, she's faithful. She doesn't cause him hell. She doesn't exact his strength. She doesn't take away from the fervor of his power. Hell, I will go wifeless before I have one to relegate me unto, under that kind of effeminate manifesto. And that doesn't mean you abuse her. When I say that part, many men will say, that's right. But hell, you're weak, man. That doesn't mean you abuse her and talk to her in any kind of way. You talk to her right. Yah's talking to us right here. Hallelujah. He's talking to us right. Hallelujah. He's got to search out. If we don't get this out of us, he said, because they were clean, there was nothing in them. There was nothing that defiled them. They were able to endure the task. We can endure damn things, the least of things. Where's our imuna? Where's our confidence in Yah? There is nothing to be found. We wonder about our little taff, our babies. You raising them for the gates of hell? These sorry mammies, they're not even mammies. A mammy will put the titty in the mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I or any man, according to Yeshua, quickly, 8 and 20, I'm here to Zachar. I'm here to warn you, Yisrael, to admonish us. That's what warning is. That's what the Zachar of Yah is. It is to warn us, to enlighten us. It is to teach us. Zaha is to rebuke us. It is to teach us. It is to enlighten us. It is to cause the light to shine. That's what the Zaha of Yah is. And everything that Yah speaks unto us, it enlightens us. It warns us. It gives us the judicial process. 
And you must go before the judgment seat of Yah. Every one of us is going to stand before that seat. So you must adjudicate your case before him. And if there is no power of the Zom, the blood of Yahshua, you have nothing to say. And that's a fact. Hallelujah. So this is the catalyst. This is the, this is the strength of any messenger of Yah. Yahshua 820. He says, I want you to direct your attention to the Torah. He says, and also to the Tehuda. Not only to the Torah, the instructions, the will of Yah, the purpose of Yah, the wisdom of Yah. That's what the Torah is. The mitzvah are simply the stipulations of what the Torah is based upon. The mitzvah, the mitzvah. Va, the va are thoroughly entailed in the Torah. How you adjudicate before Yah, according to just knowing this, it doesn't mean nothing. So we must understand the Torah, the directions, the directive, the wisdom, the counsel of Yah. How to adjudicate, how to bring all things, how to worship. How to acknowledge all of that is Torah. All of that is Torah. Because the first four deal with worshiping Him. Hallelujah. To the Torah and to the Tehuda, He said, any man, if they do not um, uh, speak or they uh, do not utter or avouch or avow according to the Torah, if they do not speak according to this, to this word, what word? According to the Torah. He said there, because there is no light in them. There is no iron. There is no spiritual revelation. There is no mental and physical revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach. If a man that calls himself a messenger, if he does not speak according to the Torah, if his words are not according to the Torah or the Tehuda, the testimony of power, the revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach, it is because there is no ayin, there is no spiritual concepts of knowledge in that man. There is no spiritual wisdom in that man at all. And we are dealing with a generation without the Ruach HaKodesh of Yah. They have the damn dirty dog, Holy Ghost. Oh, he is blaspheming. I will never blaspheme the Ruach HaKodesh. Because the Ruach HaKodesh will lead and guide us into all, into the wholeness, the fullness, the completion of Torah, which is truth, which is the emat of Yah. And the damn Holy Ghost drive you into the Jesus thumping uh, and the lion thumping and the whore thumping uh, and the fag thumping and the butch bulldagger thumping. Uh. Them whores in the church of God in Christ, they get up there and shake their ass. And the faggot men in there, Jerry curls down their back and dancing like a freak. And the big belly bishop, all he wants is money. These are dirty dogs, Yisra'ya. I say to my Abba, kill me. Don't allow me, please. Take my life. Don't allow me to condescend into such depths of darkness and wickedness that my conscience has no fear, no yare, no yira of ya, no fear of trembling and trepidation. No fearfulness that I take his name in vain and scandalize it for damn Jesus thumping way. So if a man speaks not according to this, there is no, there is no ayin, there is no light in his revelation. His mind is dark, his concepts of Yah, they're, they're full of darkness. He has no light of the Torah of Yah, that's the truth, Yisra'ya. He has no revelation of the power of Yahshua HaMashiach. There's no witness of his life in them. Because when a man has that witness, he does all things to please Yah. Something has happened to cause us to, to, to be relegated to such despair that we're in. When our hearts do not rejoice at the sounding of the name, and yet when they announce uh, uh, the Miami heats, everyone uh, with one synchronized voice roars uh, to the sound uh, of their gods. And when Mr. LeBron James rise up, uh, that when he gets old, his God is their God is not worth a damn. They put them out to the damn dung pens. Uh, 
rise up and dunk a damn ball and they with the cassandra of a voice they stand and they cheer and they and they rise to the occasion we hear the name of god there's no sound that's in our damn wicked minds Hear the name Kmart and Walmart. Uh, we're ready to go. We drop every damn thing. Uh, baby mama roll. Uh, don't mess with me. Not me. I'm a warrior. Hallelujah. I love to fight. I'm a fighter. I am a fighter. And I love to fight. Can I tell you my biggest challenge? You know who it is, can I tell you? You know how to answer it. Can I tell you my biggest challenge? What I'm in a fight, can I tell you? It's me. Me. Like we Yisraya. Me. Hallelujah. So they speak not according to that. It's because there is no witness of Yah's power in them. I want to paint a scenario here because everything will revert back to Revelation 13, 17 that no man is able to buy neither is he able to sell to redeem, to be the kinsman unless he has the mark of the beast. He will not be able to operate and perform in that fashion. And as I perceive my ark, you will understand it as I go. And at the conclusion of this, you will say, ah, we've all been deceived. Because our hearts are deceitful above all things. And they're desperately, they're desperately wicked. Desperately wicked. Our hearts practice every kind of weak, wicked device. The Russia, the Russia, we're guilty criminals, and the Russia is there's pleasure in our sins. We do all kinds of unrighteousness. So in order to understand this concept that Gilyana chapter 12 and 13 plays out, you must go back to the resources. You must go back to the Tasneeth to understand the process. And I want to begin here according to that line of spiritual thinking. Again, here in the book of 2 Shamul, yeah, 2 Samuel, chapter 24 and verse 24. Hallelujah. How we're going to be able to buy and sell in a condition whereby no man is able to buy and sell unless. He received the mark of the beast. You have no power to be your kinsman redeemer. This has nothing with you going to dock and donuts and buying some damn donuts. Your silver will not mean a damn thing. If they will cast their gold and their si silver, and these liars that tell you to buy gold and silver, they are damn judicizers. Their money changes, they hold the purse in their hands. It is the same word, kasef. Kasef. It is silver that changes mother. And they're going to cast their gold and silver into the streets because it's going to become tarnished. What has that to do with buying bread, loaves of bread or meat? Yah has not changed. If he brought a stubborn, wicked people that were rebellious out of Misraim, he's going to feed his house. And although we die, we have the bread. You're sure he is either telling the truth or he said a lie. He said, I am the bread of life. I am the lunch chamber. If any man eat this bread, he shall live and not die. It's either the truth or a lie. If it's a lie, throw the book away. He's going to feed us. We're going to buy and we're going to sell. I'll show you. These are ignorant men that and they're at the helm of what we call the council of truth. The ignorant men. What is that? Well, the prefix of ignorance is ignore, isn't it? They ignore truth, don't they? Don't they ignore truth? 
They ignore the living truth. They ignore Yeshua and replace him with a damn dirty Jesus, an effeminate faggot. And that's why these damn things you call churches, the whole houses, are filled with faggot fags. They're filled with butch bulldaggers and adulterating, fornicating, whoredom of every kind of deceit. Women burning in their damn lust and men so lustful. They have no honor for the woman. They sleep with her, marry today, and bury tomorrow and juice into the next day. And they're so damn dumb, they give themselves over unto what a damn simple pleasure. That's no pleasure. They receive nothing out of it. You might as well talk to me. Your CPR led us in a song. Can go around Torah of Yah so high, can get over it so high, so low that it reached down to our own disgust. The wickedness of our sin, we're disgusting. And yet, Yah, His great compassion for Yisra'ya, it reaches down. He's going to feed us. He's going to feed us. If any man seek to save his damn flesh, he's going to lose it. You can put up all the canned goods. Well, we put them up because it saves us money. And we can take that money and do other things. We can reach you. And so we grow up on the knee in the garden. I'd rather it rot in the field uh, than there be nothing there. I was telling Zakane Shibri, he said, I get, get a few. I say, man, take all you want. Anything there. I relented. I said I wasn't going to pick him beans, but I picked him some beans the other day. I said, man, don't ask me for that. Come on. Hallelujah. It's all right to put some cans up for the cold months that are ahead, but if you think that's life, you are a damn fool. These damn survivalists surviving what? When the terror of his indignation pours, when the za'am not just any wrath. It is the zah, za'am, za'am. The za'am of Yah is not some little damn nuclear bomb. It's not Iran trying to get some nuclear armaments. It's not this wicked whore, America, dropping her bomb, baby. When the fire of Yah comes, when the fire of Yah comes, they tried to consume in their fire. In their nuclear seven times, it was a perfect fire. That's why those that were incomplete, when they got by, Zakane brought out to us, they were consumed by the fire. It was a perfect, was a, they defied the perfect law of Yah, and Yah gave them wisdom to make a perfect fire. But not one hair of the head was singed. They can drop the nuclear bombs, they're not going to singe one hair. They can drop them on Yisrael, Yah will not going to die. But when the fire, when the ish, when the ish of Yah flows, it's beyond a little damn nuclear bomb. Damn the nuclear bomb. And so you got these little liars today. Oh, the nuclear bomb, they're going to drop that damn the nuclear bombs. When Yah set this place on the fire of hell, ain't nothing going to put it out. Nothing. We better be walking in your shoe. Did we not put three? And lo and behold, is there not four? And one has the appearance of the sun. Man, the son of Yah. No king, that did not come by Dagon. Yah, that came and he said, no, 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 that's mine there. So damn the nuclear bombs. And you fearful ones fearing the damn nuclear bomb, buying iodine and for the nuclear fallout, let it fall out. Let it fall out. Well, how are you going to buy and sell? I'm buying the truth. And I'm not selling that not. I buy Torah. I buy Torah delight and I sell it not. You understand? We're going to get to the crux of it. We're going to see the buying and selling. What does that mean to one in the boon is there that's beyond reach of, uh, of the populace of the world? Uh, buying and selling. Hell, he doesn't buy and sell no. They bought it and they trade. This has much more profoundness and much more in-depth power than what these dirty bastards have taught us. They must come down. You can't take down a whole house being jitter with it. You got to tear it down. You got to tear this mother down. She's a whore. She's a harlot. 
You gotta tear it down. You gotta be guided. You gotta be guided at the at the root of it all. The spiritual leaders and advisors they must come down. Can I proceed, Yisra? Yeah. All right. I can roll like this for another hour. Okay, so just at least. All right, Achmikaya. Don't mess with me. Hallelujah. Listen to this in the book of Second Shemu as Shemu Ya twenty four twenty four. I must move quickly. <clears throat> In this great deliverance of the battle, listen now, Yah had given Yisra'ya victory. Has he not given us tesh? Shua, in your Shua. He had given his house the great victory. The power to overcome, the power to overthrow, the power to annul and to nullify the very strength of the enemy. And look at the first thing what Dawi does. Look at this. It says in second, second, I'm sorry, second Shemuel, Shemuel, yeah, 24, 24, not the Shemuel, E-L, but L. It is L, A-L-E, not L, A-L-E. Even with Yisrael, it is not E-L, it is A-L-E, L, L. All right, Shemuel, it says in verse 24, and the Malach Dawi, the beloved one of Yah, he says unto Avrana, he says unto him, hallelujah, no, I don't want you to give this to me. But look what he says. But I was surely Kana because Yah had redeemed them from under the hands of the oppressor. That's what the system is all about. You will see it as I go, Yisrael. It will become clearer as we proceed. I got 28, 29, 30 pages here. You have to go back and listen to it, but it will bring things evidently clear unto you. He says unto him, Avrana. He said, no, but I will surely buy, I will buy this, I will purchase it. As Yah's redeeming power has been manifest, it from you, he said, for a price. I will give you the righteous price. No man will be able to buy and sell Chana. No man will be the redeemer of another man. As Yisra'ya, there was a, the Torah gave us stipulations on selling a Yisra'elite. And these are the orders that sold for seven years. After the seventh year, he is, his, his service to it is over. Come on. But this is a kingdom of darkness that will sell you, your babies, to hell for peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Look what he says in the next line here, the next phrase. Neither will I offer burnt offerings to Yah my Abba, of which does cause me nothing. Do not have short time, quote unto Yahshua, to Helium 93, what he said that thou knoweth that he has given his melechim charge over you, least that any time that thou shalt dash your foot against a stone. Have I taught that message yet? The stone? I got to teach that one. I may have him. He does such excellent teaching. Have him to do that for me. That's all right. I'm not going to tell him how to teach it, but he can teach it. And then I can teach it. And Zachim Birmin, and Ach Shimri, and whomever. You understand? Hallelujah. Let's bring some clarity here. He said, I will not offer unto you an orphan which costs me nothing. So thy weed he cannot, again, he bought the threshing floor. He bought the oxen of the Bacha for 50 shekels of kashem, of silver. He paid money for it. No man is going to be able to buy or sell. We must. It all has to do with the offerings unto Yah. Unto the powers of hell. That's what it's all about. If you read Revelation 12 and 13, you will see the sequential flow. See what it's all about. And you will find the word worship inserted in there about six or seven times. Because we have no desire to study. We don't know how this Torah. And we're not careful to pay attention to every word. We miss the whole thing. We've been trained that way. We've been trained to be blind. Our children have been trained in a process to be taught. There's no liberality. There is no excitement about learning. It is a humdrum, boring way. Teachers are boring. They're humdrum. They're boring. They don't know how to teach to excite the little mind. That's a fact. That's why the children are dumb. That's why the children are dumb. 
The children are dumb in these dumb schools and they're putting billions in them and they are dumb. They look dumb. They act dumb. The matterism is dumb. And that's a fact. It's silly. The dungeons of hell to train your daughters and sons to do wickedly. Train your daughters to be little whores and dress like little whores and act like little whores. At a young age. Because a silly man is a whore and a stupid jackass. And the papa, he just is immature, more immature than she is. Because the only thing he gives a damn about is a television and a video game and twisting his thumbs. I will, man. And filling his greedy gut with hamburgers and french fries and potato chips. And Coca-Cola. How about that? All right, Zachin Charles. Davis out there in Los Angeles. All right. He feeds them after service when they come. Hallelujah. He says, and die we. Look, he built there a misbeach, an altar. The perfect altar of offering. He built the altar. Where's the offering? Should not we have an altar or the misbeach in our bosom? Do not we offer all the altar unto Yah? The offerings of what? Todah, thanksgivings unto Yah. Should not that flow from Yisra'ah? Yeah. He reminded us that no man, when you hear the sound of the sackbut, the dulcimer, and all music, you must bow down. It's not the writing of Daniel or Daniel. Isn't that, that about worship the whole scenario? Yeah. The whole thing is. Everything, everything, the whole book, and how Shatan knows that. And that way he built this misbeach to Yah, and he offered burnt offerings and shalom offering. So Yah was intrigued. Is not the offering to intrigue? Do not the Hindus are not is not there special breads that they buy? To bring to the altar. You're abreast of that. Do they not buy certain kinds of breads and wafers and little certain meat offerings? Sure they do. Every religion does that. And you must bring the proper kind of offering to the God. And if you don't bring the proper offering, the God is this. Please damn your Hindu gods. Damn your Brahmas. And if you don't bring the proper offering, uh, and they got little shops that are set up uh, where you can go buy your damn uh, pagan offering. And that is the truth. There are certain offerings when you enter into houses, uh, you know, dates and sweets, uh, you got to go to certain places to buy that. It's all about offerings, Yisrael. It is not about some damn biscuit uh, or some uh, awesome organic flour. It's beyond that concept. It's greater than that. You will understand, my friend. If I don't bring great clarity, I will step down at the finish and the conclusion. If you can challenge this in any way, whereby I'm teaching you all a delusion of a lie, get me out of here. You have the authority to do that. You make sure they do that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I will buy that to make sure that I can offer unto Yah with no restraint. See, if you give it to me, you will say, well, you, you can't do that. I, I don't want you doing that around here this time of the day. That we say, no, I will buy it. See, you can buy truth and sell it not. And there's nothing and no one can restrain you when you're walking in truth. Hallelujah. No one. So he bought it. So Avranah could not say, well, I, I love you, king, and I, I know you're the king, but I don't want that kind of display, all of that blood and all of that here. I don't want that here. It, it, is, it is a nuisance. It's not very picturesque. It's not beautiful. And I like for the landscape to maintain that. He built an altar. He built him a, an altar unto Yah. A misbeach to offer up. Unto Almighty Yah Yisrael. And that is what this power of hell shall do. There shall be an offering that supersedes the offering of Almighty Yah. Yet yeah, we will give them the sacrifices. But we will offer up the Zabach. We will offer up the Zabach unto Yah. 
that which is pure and delicate, the bread that has been baked in the inward parts of our hearts through the very fires of trials. And we offer unto him the refined bread, offering the refined flour. That's what we will do, Yisrael. And so there will be a system that no man can offer unto the powers of hell unless you have the mark where you can buy the specifics of what is needed to bring the offering before the kings of darkness. It doesn't have a damn thing to do with you with bread or cookies. That's a fact. Does it have one thing? We have been hoodwinked. We have been all tricked. Raise up the prophet, yeah, the true prophet, the true messenger. Hallelujah. I don't want that responsibility. Hallelujah. I don't want that. Strong, vibrant man. Virile. Ready to roll. I don't want it. I'm getting older. Hallelujah. Yes. Of course, I had a great wisdom and a great strength of appreciation for what these ark do when they cut those trees. I was saying to the ark, I said, you can't go out there cutting these trees without having something on your gut. You began to roll and pulling those. I got everything neat too. So we go chip it up. We we'll get the stump. I, I made sure. I'll, I, there's one thing about me. I always organize. Everything is in neat piles. All the wood is in neat piles. Everything is laid out. So when you all help me tomorrow, we, I don't want you falling. We need you out there next week, all right? But you can appreciate that kind of work. And the labor, and they come home. Come on. I don't want them having to get wood or anything. They have labored. You understand? That's not an easy job. It is tough. I felt that two days in a row. I would have been out there all day yesterday, moving on quickly. Hallelujah. So Yah in verse 25, so Yah was intrigued for the land and the plague or the mach gave father, the, the depths of the famines and death and the plague, the slaughter, the pestilence, the, the mach gave the mach gave it was stayed from Yisrael. There was no famine. That's why Yisrael in the midst of that uh, Zakina, I can imagine how those uh, three Hebraic men uh, in there, they were shouting not because of the fire, but because of Yah's power to sustain. Yah say, listen, in the midst of all of that, we're going to maintain the mitzvah of Yah. We're going to maintain the Torah. We're going to have the power of the testimony of Yahshua. And then we're going to overcome Yisrael. Yeah? And the famine shall not come not unto us. It's not going to touch us. The flame shall not touch us. Death shall not touch us. It shall be a pleasure to lay down our life for all money. Yeah? It shall not overcome us. It shall not overtake us. It shall not cause us to be fear. And that's what these liars are doing. They are preparing. Supporting uh, and, and promoting fear in the hearts of the people. Don't spend no ten thousand dollars in food. Send it to me. And when you get hungry, when it's time to eat, you'll eat. All right, you'll eat. Elijah said the widow say, "Go, go borrow pots uh, and take." I know how these land dogs use that. Uh, you take borrow pots from your neighbors and all, uh, and then the, uh, the, that that cruise of oil, uh, Yah's going to fill everything. He's going to fill us with all of gladness. Uh, he's going to fill us with all of, of delight. Uh, he's going to fill us with all uh, of suffering. Come on, Yisrael. We have not suffered to the marriage of Yahshua HaMashiach. He is not going to put us through anything that is unbearable. Yah stayed. He stayed. He stayed the famines and the land, uh, whereby the pestilence and death and destruction did not destroy Israel. It was because of the offering. It was because of the altar of Yah. We must get the altar clean. Whereby first of all we began with impelling our flesh and the passion of our own will. Let Yahshua HaMashiach arise from the depths of our bosom. Your damn canned corn is not going to save you. You put back all the rice you want to. The damn weavers are going to eat it. Ox Simeon was telling me a very studious man around the corner here. He raised bees. And he was telling Ox Simeon, we were sitting there talking yesterday. He said, you know, Reak, he said that there was a time there was nothing for him to get 80 gallons of honey out of his hides. A year, that's a lot of honey. He said he does well today if he get 20, 24 gallons. If that, he said, because there is a persistent of all kind of cankerous death, 
mites and things that they fight. All of these remedies to rid your heights. Come on, Yisrael. It's not about biscuits. We've had enough biscuits. We can live 80, I can live 80 days off the biscuits I've eaten. You can too. And that's a fact. Hallelujah. It's not about that. So he built an offering. Offering unto Yah to stay this death. We're going to have to have an altar. This misbeach. It's going to be an altar built on truth. And I will show you how to build that. We're going to learn all this, all right? Hallelujah. Well, man, I know how to build. You don't know how to build Yah's way. We need to build his way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Yah said, I will stay the seven year famines. That will be a seven year period. Three and a half years of great trials and affliction that shall try Yisrael, and we shall be brought forth purer than gold. Hallelujah. We cannot walk in this religious mindset that we have accustomed ourselves to. Because Yah is not warning this wicked world. I want to illustrate this to us, paint us, give us an example. Even as Yachahan, as he reproves those that thought that they had the essence, uh, the strength of the knowledge of Torah, and they didn't have nothing. He begins here in the book of Matitya, Matitya, Matthew chapter 3, verse 7. This elitist group of people, this elitist, uh, he's talking to the Pushim and the Sudikum. He says here in Matthew chapter 3, verse 7. When Yachahan saw that many, me old, much in number, a lot of them, he saw many of the Pharisees, the Bushim, and he saw the Sadducees or the Sadduchim, these religious men of oratorial skills, he saw them come to his mikvah, to the immersing in the water. When he saw them, he said unto them, he called them a generation of fetid, a generation of wicked vipers. He said, you are those that administer some of the most twisted forms. That is what the fetid is. It is a twisted serpent, a beast, and their doctrines are twisted. Isn't that one that's a beast that's going to rise up? Is he not a beast? Is he not a beast? Is not the government predicated upon bestiality? Don't we see that in this nation? It's beyond that when uh, our Mr. Illustrious President Barack Hussein Obama said that he approves or he gives credence unto men marrying men and women with men, women and they love each other. That's not love. If that's love, I don't want that. If that's what you call a damn dirty, hairy-faced man kissing another man, you will go to hell with that. You can go to hell, that's not love. Some two big titty women rubbing titties together and kissing each other like a man and a woman, that's beyond filthiness. It's beyond defilement and filth. It's beyond wickedness and uncleanliness. There is no word for that. That's why Yah's going to burn them in the hell of this destruction of the eternal fire. That's why when he sent them down to Sodom and Gomorrah, these faggots can say what he said. It was no nuclear bomb. We're bringing out what the reason for the fire. But the fire, the eternal fire of Yah that burns his word is a fire. It's a consuming fire. He sent down the power of his coal, the essence of him. You're sure. He said, burn him to hell. He said, Isabel, I'm going to kill your babies. I'm going to kill them all, your taff. I'm going to kill your men. We need math, few men. M-A-T-H, math. Need a few men. That's all you need. That's what the Marine says. Few good men. Talk to me. They're the few, the proud Marines. And of course, when I was in the military in the mid-70s, you walked through the airports, the old Marines, they, they were straight. Nobody walked like them. All of them, built, they had those tailored. Man, you look at your stuff, you're like, come on, man. That's the truth. Me being in the Army, you put on that green, you look at that, you're like, no. Th th that's not like them cats. 
sharp, lean, erect. They walked erect. You knew they were Marines, too. Shoes shining, glistening. You look at your stuff, you like, you felt ashamed because it didn't look like theirs. The few. Shall there be few that go in their rats? Only the few, Yisraya, that shall go in their rats. All right? Not many, but just the few. Few there be that enter in, into that place. So look at this, this conversation, this reproof of these men. Matitha 3, 7. But when Yochanan saw that many of the Pharisees, uh, the Pushim and the Sadducees, the Sadduchim, came to his mikvah, his immersing uh, into the water, he said to them, he called them a generation of Fetim. You're twisted. You're like a serpent. That's what a serpent does. He twists himself uh, and he rises up to strike, doesn't he? He said, you're a twisted beast of hell. Your doctrine is so damn twisted that you don't even have the fear of Yah. Look at the words that comes out of his mouth. He says, uh, who has zaha? Who has warned? Who has taught you? Who has admonished you? Who has enlightened you? Who has sent out the light to you? Who has cautioned you? Who has warned you uh, to flee the wrath? Uh, and that is the Harun. His Harun, who has warned you? To flee the wrath. And this is always Yah's anger. His Harun. We can't even have the Harun of Yah. This is exclusive. The description of Yah's wrath. Who have warned you to flee the Harun. The agonizing of his anger. The vengefulness of his anger. The Hamas. The destructive power of his anger. Who have warned you? Who have warned you, he says, to flee from the wrath that is to come. And the word haron, it has one exclusive meaning of all of that as my uh, and traversing through the Torah and definitives or word definition. It has the application of the anger or the wrath that is a burning fire. It is a burning anger. That's why Yeremiah said, this is shut up in my bones. It is like the fire. It is unquenchable. Not like the whole houses say it. He said, this fire, this living fire is in me. It can't, I can't put it out. It won't go out. It's a fire that is uncomprehensible. You can't express it in words. All I can say, it is like fire shut up in my bones. It's a cancer that cannot eat you away. Yisrael. So who has warned this generation? So if Yah, he is not trying to warn the religious elitists. He is trying to zahir his elect, his people. He's not trying to warn the Sadduchim, those that, uh, that are intellectually, uh, uh, have the intellectual uh, ability uh, in their disposition or to display what they think is the knowledge of Torah. And they don't have it, Yisraya. I don't give a, a, a damn if it's what they call the Orthodox Judaism, uh, full of lies and corruption, full of hatred and prejudice. Uh, not of the lineage of Yah, it is a damn man-made religious, false religion, just like Christianity and all the rest of them. Just like Hinduism and all of them. And all these offshoots of what we call Hebrewism and all of that, they are made up doctrines of uh, depraved men. There's only one truth, and your sure is the, he is the epitome of that truth. You can't find this in Jesus Christ. You can't find this in the loud God. Hallelujah. You can't find it that way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He warned them against that desire, the passion of their wickedness. And if there is one verse in the book that gives us a tremendous explicit, and that is simply a revealing concept of this, I found it in the book of Sharach. Is this one coming? Is he not the man of sin, the man of perdition? Is he not? 
Now we know what withholding, withhold back or hold the order back until he be re revealed, the man of sin. And from that it produced the very destructive nature of Omar Iyam. Shirak speaks of a time that we are in. He speaks of this. And he gives us one statement that it should resonate in our bosom. We should be aware of it. It speaks so clearly to this generation. Shirak chapter 22 verse 7. He says this, Oh, that a guard was set over my feth, my mouth. Oh, that there was a guard set over my mouth. He said, and the oath of the seal of wisdom or prudence upon my lips, my lotion that comes out of my tongue, that, I, that it keeps me from falling so that my tongue destroy me not oh that if my mouth was sealed and my lips had no power to speak and the seal over me was the one of prudence isn't that what yakahan says in revelation here is wisdom herein is wisdom the mark the number of the beast 666 isn't that what he said? So Shirak speaks of if my seal on my lips, it was one of prudence. Isn't prudence wisdom? Isn't that the chukmah of Yah is the experience or, or how to experience the Torah in the beauty of its light? Isn't that what that is? Isn't that what prudence is? We need the prudence of Yah. We need wise men to speak unto us. We must be wise in the concepts of Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. We must be. And there are only those that he will warn. That's why I began with this precept and concept here. That as we flow through this, we're going to understand this mark. And what this is all about. No man will be able to buy or to sell. You will understand that greatly. There are only those that have a certain predisposition that are going to be warned and those that are not going to be warned. And Jeremiah gives us a great indication of that in Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 10. Yes says, to whom shall I speak and give warning or ood? Whom shall I repeat myself to? Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 10. Whom shall Yah, shall he speak and give warning or ood when he repeats himself, when he protests against the ways of Yisra'ah, we had admonished them, whom shall he speak to? He said that they may shanach, that they may hear with the ruach of obedience. Is he speaking to us and we have the will to obey? Is it our pleasure to obey Yah? He said, Behold, their ear is aril. It is uncircumcised. We don't hear. I watch us in here. We smile at the simplest of little things. We see a little baby cutting up. We, we, that draws our attention. And hell, uh, we see the simplest little thing in, and we get the smiling and grinning and looking at that. But when it comes to the Torah or the hearing of the word of Yah, our ears are not attuned to that. I watch mothers want to play with babies. They want to do everything. When I was a child, they taught us, even as little babies, how to sit in the presence of Yah. You teach them from the, you know they're teaching them from the womb now, don't you? They're reading to them and making them bright. They're reading to them because they want scholars of babies. They don't want babies to love Yah. They want scholars. They want them to be smart. And so the simplest of little things draw our attention. Because we don't give a damn. And especially those who I want to hear, I want to, they don't want to hear a damn thing. Yeah. That's this generation. Yeah. It's just the littlest, smallest of matters. Uh, that and that's all the enemy needs. Yeah. 
It is the little leaven that leavens the whole lot. It is the small infractions that, that cause and inhibit your ears from hearing you yeah. You that are there, sit your young'uns down. You that in here, you be quiet. Sit your young'uns down. Make them sit still. Hell, you give them a television and bunny rabbit, sure they're still. Sure they are. And they can't sit still for you. Something is sick in your damn mind. I'm not apologizing to anyone. Hallelujah. He said, Behold, their ear is aral. They cannot listen because the word of Yah to them is a kappa. It is a reproach. It taunts them. They don't like when Yah speaks to them. They mock Yah. They make mockery of Yah. They scorn Yah. It is a reproach. It is a hippa. It is a hippa. It is a reproach unto them. They mock it. They have no delight in it. They have no hafiz. They don't enjoy the word of Yah. They enjoy silly things. And that's why these beasts out of hell, they take captivity or bring them into the shibuth. The scripture calls them silly women, these, this religious spirit that we all have. We think we love Yah, we want, oh, I love Yah, I want to do right, I want to get right. You don't want to get right. Because when one wants to get right, the first thing they do is what? They examine themselves. And your ear is so in tune to hearing the Torah of Yah, you let nothing at all reflect your ears from hearing. Hell, we worry about what time it is. You don't worry about that in Walmart. You don't worry about that in Kmart. You don't worry about that in the biscuit store sitting down. We filling our guts with the slop of this damn world. This spilt some nasty slut cooking for you. Digging in a dirty nose uh, on her monthly administration. And you eat like a damn hog. Yeah. Cannot go around. Yeah. My superlatives are going to be pronounced. I want them to be pronounced. I'm ignorant. And so I ignore the philosophies uh, and also the grammatics with the linguistics of this wicked nation. So my speech is rough and crude. I want it to be that way. Because we're crude to Yah. Yes. That's why this power of hell. Yes. Because the sword is in the house of Yisrael. Yes. We despise him. Yes. He said they have no half face, no delight in my Torah. Yah says therefore... I am male, I am full to the brim. It's overflowing. He said, I am full of my chema. I'm full of my fury. My indignation and my wrath and my anger is beyond control. I'm full. This is Yah talking. I'm full of fury. Oh, Yah. I am weary. I am la. I am just impatient with withholding in. Yah says, I will shafak, I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of the young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken the age with him that is old. He's not sparing nobody. That's why we see the proliferation. That's why Shaul writes unto Corinthians. He says to the young Beth, you keep yourself covered. You don't lay down in bed with some damn stranger and pop babies out. He says, don't you know by your set of partners and your husband, then your child is made tahor, they're clean. If not, it is an unfilth. That's why they are Pumping our babies, they're killing babies, uh, they're opening their legs, every kind of damn demonic spirit it is. Yeah. And these little babies' personality at birth. That's the fact. Yeah. Oh, you think they're cute because that's your little grandbaby, or your cousin, little baby. She's so sweet. You watch them do little things that beyond their age of comprehension. 
That's why your mothers must be mothers and your fathers. Hell, you must be fathers. Men aren't marrying women today because they can get a lay anywhere. I'm just straight up with you. The young ones do not understand that. By and by they will, and they should. You should teach them. You should teach your little babies, your little girls, the beauty of a body. Nobody touch you. Nobody. You should teach them. The covering, the clothing, a certain way. You don't do it, you're not even a sorry mammy. And dad, if you don't enforce it, you're not even a daddy. You're an effeminate Jezebel. Ours ain't taking nothing back. Ours ain't not taking nothing back. How about that? Ours ain't fit for either. For me to live as Yoshua HaMashiach. If I die, what a great game. I ain't hating on death. I ain't hating on death. Is not that a promise of Yah? It is an appointment. You, you don't want to meet Yah's appointment? But hell, we get to the nickel store on time to meet. They open at night. I want to be there five past. I want, all the stuff is going to be gone. Don't you know, silly, they got more than they can sell? Because they know we're silly and we come into the nickel store. I will, my friend. Hallelujah. Give me 30 more minutes. I'm, I'm wild, but I've got, I got another 30 minutes, all right? Whether you give it to me or not, I'm going to take it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yah says, I'm weary of them. I'm impatient with them. I am Lo'ah. He's going to Shafak. When Yah pours out his fury, when he Shafak, it is without control. That's why it is important. We don't have to speak Hebrew, but we must understand the Hebraic mind of the people or the mind concept what Yah placed among his people. There those up may do an excellent job in the simplicity of just teaching. My format is a little different. I operate in a little different arena. But the same arena, no different at all. We both get dirty. We both got to ride the same horse. So it's no different at all. I may talk louder than this one or that one, but it's no different at all. His word is pure. It proceeds from him. And so we labor to define things according to his conscience, his mind. That it becomes alive in us. Don't you know the power of language, how it has dull things? Put out the fire? Is not that what Hashatan did with Hava? He put out of the fire that passion. It caused her to believe a lie. And she defied Yah. And so even our own might speak to us, that will be the strength of the power of the kingdom that Yah has raised up out of darkness. It will illuminate the whole Shech, the great dark secrets of the dark powers and the forces that have risen up against Yah. The mind of man will be inhabited by some of the most demonic, the shadow powers of hell. Hell cannot even bear all that unless they're contained in the fire of the fire of Yah, not a nuclear bomb going off every now and then. You can exhaust the nuclear armament of this earth. You can never exhaust the very fire of Yah. He is a consuming fire. His word burns because he is his word. It burns in him day and night. It never needs rest. He says, I'm impatient with you because uh, you will not hear me. You will not obey. But yet there shall be one that rise and cause many to bow down. Isn't that what they're going to do? Bow down to the kingdom power that, had, that, that was wounded but yet it is healed. We must understand that, and you don't understand that by reading that verse. You understand that by going back to better sheet. And you see the task neath, and it all lines up with Gilead. All right? I will bring light to it. Yes, Yah has put the Ruach in me to do that. He has given me the, the power, the ability to study beyond my ability. And I'm not going to abate that because uh, you want to think that you, you, you got something someone else got. I got truth. And you can have no more than what I have. You simply have truth. This immature attitude of men today, they're immature and they're effeminate, they're soft. You like to throw down on men. Well, if you're a man, that shouldn't affect you or offend you. Yeah. If you're a little boy, it will offend you. 
If you think highly of yourself, you've esteemed yourself highly, and you don't esteem the others, then you will crumble, you little, you little boy. Man has the power, he has the threshold of the pinnacle of your surest mind. He doesn't give a damn about nothing else. Everything else is mute. A little boy, he won't esteem himself and make himself, that's, that's his gratification. Not a man. Hallelujah. It is right, man. How about that? Hallelujah. I want to read this exciting event here. This is a revelation that Baruch, the scribe of Jeremiah, he writes unto us and gives us a very descriptive, analytical concept of the end time. He paints it. Uh, not this trash that Picasso painted. He painted it with a brush of Yah. He paints this with the vocabulary and the verbiage of Yah. And he writes in second Baruch. This is where it all begins. The fire begins here. And things will begin to fit jointly together. Here in the book of Baruch, second Baruch, verse 2, I want to begin reading. This is vital here. You're going to understand it as we go by and by. As we overcome, we'll understand the ways of Yah as we traverse this Torah. Oh, by and by, when we overcome me, we will understand it all by and by. I don't look for any kind of synchronized harmonize singing you can you can I sing to the fulfillment of Yah's pleasure it's amazing because mama would say sing for me baby I love you I love you and oh that and she just smiled oh sing baby <laughs> and nothing's wrong with that is it I can sing it the other way. By and by, oh, when we overcome, oh, we understand it. What, what the word? Huh? Tell me the words, my Emma, huh? Tell me the words I sing. I got it, okay. By and by, oh, when the morning come, we will understand we will un let me sing it then by and by when the shoe arise in us oh we'll understand the Torah of Yah we will dance and shout in the presence of Yah let your morning Shout on me, oh, by and by, oh, when the morning comes. I can sing it either way. I, I don't remember songs. I just don't have that ability. I can hear it a hundred times and never. I can't even sing the songs you all sing. But I know the songs. Hallelujah. I know them. Hallelujah. I know the songs. Falling in love with Yahshua HaMashiach. Falling in love with the Prince of Israel. Oh, I am falling in love with the Torah of Yah. For it is the best thing that ever happened to me. Come on. See, that excites people. Isn't that amazing? Preach to me, y'all. We're not going to be saved by singing. It's by the hearing of the Torah. Let me read this from, from Baruch, chapter, 2 Baruch 59 two. He said, for at that time, and he is talking about the Acharith. He's talking about in the Yom, the day of that time. He tells us the land, the near, the Torah of your Yahshua. His Torah is a lamp. It is a light. 
a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. He said, in that time, the lamp. Was it not what Zohin Yaramaya brought out to us uh, in that time? Uh, did not the lamp, the light, uh, in, in the midst of a fire, how do you see anything? But yet there was something and one that is brighter than the fire. There's one that is brighter than the noonday sun. Uh, that is the power of the testimony of Yahshua. And in the midst of all of the whole Shekha, in the midst of all of darkness, where light cannot even penetrate, the power of that testimony shall penetrate. He said, in that time with the lamp of the eternal Torah, the Olam via Torah, Yoshua, which exists, the word of Yah exists forever and ever. When the power that is illuminated, all those who sat in darkness, this light, Yoshua is the light. Hallelujah. He is the light. He is the oh, he is the light of the Olam. He is the word of the Olam. Yah said, let there be light. The power of your shoes said, whoop. The word of Yah. He is the word of Yah. He is the Torah. He is the Dabarim. He is the word. He is the promises of Yah. He said, this lamp will announce to those who believe the promises. See, that's what your shoe announced to us. The promises. The Dabarim, the word of Yah. The promises of Yah. The promises of their reward. And of those who deny the punishment, this is key right here, of the fire which is kept for them. It's not the nuclear bombs. And he shall cause fire to come out of the midst of the heavens. Elias said, uh, they came with the, with the company of 50. He caused the fire to come down and to consume them. And only that one servant that came and said, I know you're a messenger of Yah. Spare me. Have mercy upon me. We don't even ask Yah to have mercy upon us. He speaks about a time. This man, Baruch, was a wise, prudent man. He was the scribe. He was the one that Hatab wrote in his scribe, the mandates or the visions of Yeremiah. And Yah, the power of those words dealt significantly in the man's heart. It was not just words speaking, but it was the power of the Ruach HaKodash speaking unto him profoundly. They spoke unto him profoundly. He said, the fire that is kept back for them. Verse 3. But also the Hashemaham will be shaken. It will be shaken from its place at that time. That is the Hashemaham which are under the throne of Yah. The mighty one were severely shaken when he took Moshe with him. He said, the same mountains, the same earth. When Yah took Moshe with him, that even the whole earth moaned and groaned because he was the giver. He was the one, the word giver. He was the Nathan. He was the one that bestowed the writing of the Torah in the vision, the heart of Yisra'ya, Moshe was. And without that one that maintained the order of that, the earth shook. It moaned in desperation. It needed that's why we're groaning and moaning and waiting for our redemption. We need uh, our redemption or the light of our redemption to draw nigh. Yeah. We need your sure to come, Yisraya. Well, I got a life to live. This is not life. From nine to five, no time for wife, no time for children, no time for husband, no time for nothing. That's not living. That's slavery. That's not living, Yisraya. He had never intended for us to live like that, to rise and to get up. He gives us seven hours, of eight hours of sleep, eight hours of work, and eight hours of meditating with our families. That's what he gives us. Hell, men today sleep 10, 12 hours. Women today, they live in bed all day. Come on. He gave us at the crack of dawn. With the sun shine, we should be up. You don't lie in bed, you get up. Before the sun, that's too early. We should be up. That's right. We don't lay around all day. I despise that. That was the nature of my family. Especially when I says, all day long in bed. Get up at 2, 12, 10. Stupid. He gave us a precise mechanism for the body to thrive and to function properly. 
and to operate within the refines of the mechanism of this body. Get up. Get up. Verse 4, for he showed him many warnings. Maya, you showed Aruch, all these warnings, this Ud. He showed him many warnings together with the ways of the Torah and the end of time. If you have Baruch, you will see that written in Second Baruch. You all can purchase these missing books. You can get them for little or nothing. Baruch, Sharach, all of that. Persuadium, come on, Yisraya. Again, he says in verse 4, and he showed him many warnings together with the ways, the way we should walk, and the ordinance of Yah. He said, of the Torah and the end of time. As also to you, Yisraeli, and then farther, and also to the likeness of Tizayon, uh, with the measurement uh, which was to be made after the likeness uh, of the present tabernacle. There's a city that our forefather talks about. Uh, we'll get to that descriptive nature of the city, its breath, and all Yisraeli in New Yerushalayim shall dwell there, Yisraeli. We need to understand that and the fullness of that. Come on. We need to understand that. He also showed him at that time the measures of fire. Why is that important? The ish. We will see as we proceed. How do you offer an offering without fire? You tell me those bullocks that die, we when he cut that meat and put it on those altars, you tell me it just laid there as granite would say stunk? No. He set the fire. In order for even meat to consume like that, whereby it is almost, uh, it's one thing about the human body, it takes a tremendous heat to destroy it, and you still can't destroy it. Something about the teeth, the teeth and all that, it just, you can't destroy it. It's just amazing. You cannot destroy what Yah has created. I don't care how you try, you cannot destroy it. And there's something about a fire like that, you got to get that thing over 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit consistently for about eight, ten hours. It has to be that. So you cannot put a piece of meat there when they finished with that. It was nothing. So it had to be a far beyond the ability of man to control or, or to enhance. See, Yah takes pleasure in the obedience and the faithfulness. And he caused the fire to rise to, to a roar that it don't even cause your, your beards to be singed. Or, or the Levi's beard to be singed or the hair singed on them. As we learned, as we have learned. It doesn't cause that to be singed, Yisra'ya. Trust me on that. The fire of his anger is beyond any kind of descriptive superlatives or, or anything we can say to get a clear understanding of that. It must be done by the Ruach. We must have the Ruach HaKodesh of Yah in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, but he also showed him that at that time the measures of the fire, which is important, and the depths of the Abias or the hell, and the weight of the winds, and the number of the raindrop. Man, that's amazing. The number of the raindrops is almost showing you the number of the sands of the sea. How do you qual uh, quantify them in terminology that is understandable to man? How, how many of us can go out here and measure 10 raindrops? You couldn't measure five. But yet Yah said, at that time, for there shall be a rain, sure there shall be a hunger. And it's not going to be the hunger for bread. It's going to be a hunger for to hear. And that's why you will see this kingdom rise up out of the dungeons of hell. And will cause all allegiance. It is about what Hashatan trod your shield with. If you bow down and you worship me. I know you can take the stone and make bread. I know you can. But there's an analogy to that that is so profound. It is so riveting with revelation. We must understand God. I have the message ready to preach. I don't know it's five or six pages. But it brings it to light. What that implies. Command these stones to be made uh, the substance of life. And Yoshua said, you devil of hell, get behind me. It's commanded, it is savah by Yah. Man shall not live by bread alone, 
so no man will be able to buy and to sell. We're going to find out is this is a lie. When all Christianity purport this, you know it's a damn lie. When all Christianity teaches that, when Benny Hinn teaches that, you know it's a damn lie. When T.D. Jakes teaches that, you know it's a damn lie because it doesn't, they don't even fear that. It's a damn lie. I will show us it is a damn lie. This is, the, this is the, the massaging of a people. How these wicked men that have been raised up by hell massage our minds. And we become relaxed. And we, we have folded our hands and we fall asleep. And then we fall into the dearth of poverty. We're not strong. We're not spiritually strong. We're lean. Hallelujah. Verse 6. The suppression of wrath, the abundance of long-suffering... Uh, and the truth of his mishpat of judgment. That is what is about to be revealed. The truth of Yah's judgment. That's why he is raising up this kingdom. As Yah turns the rivers, as he turns the flow of the river, so does Yah, as even Shilomo, his wisdom talk, so he turns or changes the heart of the melak, of the king. That's why Mr. Barack Hussein Obama, I will not fight against him. Mr. Bush. Mr. Clinton, I will not fight against any of them because I know this is the ordination of Yah. I know it is. And now we're going to find out the truth of judgment, Torah judgment, what true judgment is, the truth of judgment. He said, and also in verse 7, the roots of the love, the root, the root. We must be grounded and rooted in the love of Yah. What is love? Because we have love for the Torah. And this one that shall rise up, it shall teach us to hate Torah. And that spirit that rises up in us, it causes us to hate Torah. Causes us to become antsy with Torah. Causes us to get mad. We get mad at Yisrael. Yeah, we get mad at Yah. We get mad at Yahshua. That's the truth. The root of wisdom and the richness of his benai, his understanding, uh, and the foundation of da'at, the power to discern, the, the revelation of what you discern. Uh, the height of the air, the greatness uh, of the kingdom paradise, uh, the end of the periods, uh, and the beginning of the day of judgment. Isn't that what this is all about, the day of judgment? Isn't that what the troubles of Yaakov are? The day of judgment, the day of reward for our sins, our transgressions against Yah. And the day of judgment. The number of offerings. That's what Daiwi did. He offered up unto Yah for the stay of the famine, the pestilence. And the number of offerings. The world which have not yet come. The Olam. There shall be a transformation. And there is a world that you've never seen. There's a time where about that world you've never seen that. And it is to enter in. Whoa, it is to come. Hallelujah. He says the mouth of Sheol of hell. The mouth of hell the standing place of vengeance, all hell is coming loose. The heavens shall be shaken. And those that oppose Yah, every shot them, every demon shall come down to this earth, Yisrael. He said, the place of Imuna of faith and the region of the Tikva, we must dwell in that region, in the place of Imuna faith, and we must align ourselves in the region whereby we have tikva. We have, quote, hope, unquote, tikva. Come storms, hell or high water, we have faith because we're in the place. Because this battle that we are conditioned to enter in, Yah is trying to condition us, is going to take more than some kind of little erosy emotion. We must dwell in the region of his tikva. That's in the heart of Yoshua Hamashiach. <clears throat> he said the picture of the coming punishment and the multitude of the melachim, those that have fallen, the angels, which cannot be counted. And with that, the powers of the flame and the splendor of the lightness of the revelation of Yoshua. He says, and the voice of the thunders. When that shall be, uh, he said, and the orders of the chief Melachim, uh, 
And above all, listen, I love this part. And this is where I'm going to close. And the treasures, the riches, the oh shit, the treasures of the light. The treasures of the revelation of Yorkshire. We're going to need that light in the midst of darkness. And the treasures of the light, he says, and even the change of the times and the inquiries into the Torah. Let us inquire now while we have time that we may understand what shall be. You shall not be able to buy and sell unless you have the mark. As I reiterate, the religions of the world, whether you go to Mecca, you have to buy certain garments for what they call the Hajj. Stones to throw at this little statue that they call Hashatan, and they are damn devils with rags on their heads. In the Hindu and many religions, there are little shops that sell nothing but cakes. You go to Rome, that horse sell her little crosses. And she says to everyone, that's some of the cross that her damn Jesus died on. You would think after about a billion crosses, you, have, uh, you will have taken every bit of that, even if you just take a micro speck of it. This is the damn lie that this foolish, stupid generation buys. They don't want to buy the truth. We must buy, we must sell ourselves out uh, that we may allow the power of the Torah to be incorporated in our lives uh, and we subsist, we live, and we make ourselves alive uh, because we stay in the ways uh, of the ordinance, the statutes uh, of the Torah of Yah is coming. And we better get ready. And that's a fact. You can play all you want to. But payday is coming after a while. You can play all you want. You can play whole house. You can play the wicked church thing. You can talk your damn Jesus talk all you want to. But there's a place and a time for the judgment. And that's why he's raising up this beast out of hell. Uh, this tanim, this tanim, uh, this serpent, this twisted minded power. That our minds become convoluted and twisted that we can uh, obey and walk in the light of the Torah. Let your light shine, Yah. Let the light of your living Torah shine from Hashem, uh, not upon me, uh, but through me and in me. I don't want it to shine on me. Uh, I want it in me that it shine outwardly, uh, that the excellence of that testimony may pronounce and speak of the power of the witness of Yah. Although Mr. King, uh, Mr. Obama, Mr. Putin, Miss Merkel, I don't give a damn. I will obey Yah. Damn the ways of America. I'm not afraid to say it. The only way, as far in the natural sense, what the world called making it in this country, you're going to have to kill and steal and rob. Well, I don't believe that lies. Whatever predicates or establish any kind of paradigm. That's what worked. Did Americans kill? Did they rob? Did they steal? Did they destroy? All right then, that's the, that's the, that's the, that, that's the, that's, that's the prescription. That's the prescription, say what you want to. The only way you're gonna make it in this country, you gotta do the same thing that has been done from the beginning. The only way you're gonna walk, make it with God, you gotta walk in truth, right? So same thing in this nation. Can I say this before I close? All that upheaving, uprising in Misra, in Egypt. Now where's the fire now? Now they got a government that's run by the military, by the Muslim brotherhoods. They say, we kill your mama, your babies, and damn you. Now where's the fire of it? Where's Mr. Mubarak? Old man dying sick. You don't hear anything about it. You don't read it in the paper because it's no far of revolution, no far of democracy. They killed Mr. Muammar Gaddafi. Where's Libya now? Why? Because they have the spirit of Britain, America. Look at this old wicked hole over there in Britain. They call the Jubilee. That hole is not anything to celebrate. She's a daughter of Horam. She even said to the Catholic, oh no, we establish our own religion. 
We call ourselves the Anglicans. We're a pack of hypocrites. We don't want to deal with it. Yeah, Ach Dawid and his Isha Susie and Yah wrote and said, "You know what's happening over here? This he called a whore harlot. So if he he lives in Britain, Yah brak you all this day. She's a hoe, and all she produces daughters a whore them, and little effeminate faggot Charles and all the rest of them. I want to be a man, and I'm a man. You don't have no confidence in yourself. I have no confidence in me. I have confidence in my head, my rush." Yoshua, See, I, ha I say things I have no power or strength of my own or audacity or boldness to say it. But he speaks. He said, I'm going to kill your damn babies. How about that? That's what he said. Did he not say that? Yeshua would never hurt. Jesus would never hurt nobody. I know your damn Jesus won't. Because you serve the Baptist Jesus. You serve the whole hopping Catholic Jesus. You serve the faggot Lutheran Jesus. You serve the fag dog Hebrew Jesus. Was not Yisrael known for their folly of religion, religious practice? All right, I'm going to stop. All right, Akmikaya, we're going to take it from here and we shall finish. Let us encourage ourselves and one another. Let us stand strong and be faithful in all the endeavors because the life that we think we have it is only like a vapor of smoke. I want to do right by people. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's the bomb. I would do more right by a bomb on the street than I will him. Because <laughs> he knows I'm going to do right. I do more right by a bomb on the street than you. Not that because I'm, I'm entertaining a melak. No, he's not going to come to me like that. He's smelling like whiskey. Lies. He's going to come with the truth of Yah. Because when he comes, you're going to know he's a melak. <laughs> No, he's not going to be smelling like a bum. He's not, he's not going to be on the street drinking wine and smoking crack. Damn lie. These liars say that. But because of what Yah commands me to do. And as Evander Hartsfield said to me, Brother Roberts, you're no different than a bum. And that's a fact. Because my body stinks. If I don't bathe like that, I'll stink too. If I'm out eating Bojangles chicken all the time and, 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 and the Bojangles steak, steak biscuits and, and Kentucky fried, greasy fried, I look just like him. So I berach Yah just that he grants me a little simple meal. I have no variety of food that I eat. My eating is very simple. Give me a little brown rice. Huh? What they got? Potato? Ah, give me 10 potatoes. And she brings back 30. I said, bring me 10. I don't want 30 because they, they're so tough. And you know I'm going to eat them, woman. Be hard headed. Say, 10, bring me 10. And then they defied the command uh, of. <clears throat> and I'm hollering because I'm eating bread. And I don't. I won't say anything else about it then. I'll just leave it at that. Oh, how about that? Mess you up. It just mess you up. I, come on. I, so I don't eat a variety of stuff. Just simple. Hallelujah. So let us eat the truth. And live. may Yah barak you all, barak you all who have joined us, our friends, uh, and above all, you my enemies. I know I got one or two there. I appreciate you coming, all right? I really do, man. You don't know how much it means to me. Because I want you to challenge what I say. Uh, Hallelujah. Uh, I want you to challenge it. That's why I like my enemies. I'm not your enemy. You may be my enemy, but that's all right. We're all right. Is that all right, uh, uh, Shimon? That's all right. All right, we're straight. Let us stand to our feet. Be encouraged today, Israel. Hallelujah. I don't feel no ways tired. Come too far from where I started from. Hallelujah. And all things are precious, Abba, in the name of Yahshua Hamashiach. We do barak you for all things, for your mercies, your chassets. Your tender kindness is great beyond our comprehension. What are we but mere flesh? But we barak you this Shabbat. Make us wise today in your wisdom and understanding. We pray that the ears of all of us are open to hear what this truth shall reveal unto us in the coming days to come. We ask you to refresh your man, servant, that he may speak with clarity, preciseness, and that the ears of all of your elect children, all of your precious one, your Bahir, may hear and understand. Grant unto us this day the shalom of your Shafat, the Shabbaton, 
that we may rest greatly in your sure Hamashi. We rock you, touch us all, young and old, our taf, our bain, our chutz, uh, and all, ya, touch the ach, strengthen, grant the desires of the heart, bring into the bosom the heart, those that desire the wife, the husband, do it, ya, in your sure's name. Because you declared that it was not tough for man to be alone, and you made him a help meets. We ask that in your sure's name, grant unto us this day of pleasantry as you have began this by the awakening of us all. Bless all those that join us, our enemies, our friends. Strengthen them in your sure's name, we ask, and cause your light, the witness of the testimony of Hamashiach, to shine greatly upon them with great visibility. We ask all in your sure's precious, most beautiful and prominent name. And with that, our voices declare your power and your kindness with hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah.